Coming up on this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's taking some 3D panoramic snaps with Sony's WX5 camera. I go to Bristol in pure gadget style and bring you this week's best tech news. And welcome to this week's Web TV. Coming up, I head from London to Bristol to check out one of the first fully integrated on demand entertainment systems for trains. But first, John's got his hands on Sony's latest camera, the WX5, which is their first compact camera to take full 3D panoramic pics. But is this feature and the rest of the camera really any good? Over to John to find out. Sony's new WX5 is a pretty conventional looking ultra compact camera, but it does have a few remarkable features, more of which in a minute. As for its basic spec, well, it's got 12.2 megapixels, it's got a five time zoom with a pretty useful 24 millimeter equivalent wide end, 1080i HD video recording and a HDMI output socket. So, all fairly conventional stuff. The image quality is pretty good as well. Obviously with a camera this size you get a bit of fuzziness around the edge of the frame, but otherwise it's very sharp and the colours are good. Now the first remarkable feature about the WX5 is I think it's excellent high ISO performance. Sony have a back illuminated CMOS sensor in here which apparently gives you fewer wires in the way of the pixels and the result is certainly very usable shots at 1600 or even on occasions 3200 ISO. It certainly doesn't have that sort of smoothing over the detail effect that you get in a lot of compact cameras. Definitely one of the best. It's also one of the best video performances I've ever seen from a compact camera. It's 1080i not 1080p but the movement's very smooth you get excellent sound quality with the built-in stereo microphone and the autofocus works pretty well as well you also get some of the fancy features we've seen on larger sony cameras like the sweep panorama mode the 10 frames per second burst mode and a sort of super intelligent auto mode that uh, combines up to six images to give you extra dynamic range or reduce noise. But the most remarkable features of the WX5 are in the fashionable area of 3D. Now clearly it doesn't have two separate lenses like Fuji's 3D cameras. What it does instead is use that sweep panorama technology to build up a sequential image composed of left and right frames, which the camera then processes together into a 3D image that you can view back on a 3D TV. Now, the images you can take are either sweep panoramas, or alternatively, you can sweep round a particular object, building up a 3D view of it from sequential multiple angles. And here's the 3D panorama shot played back on an active 3D TV. That's what you need the glasses for. And it genuinely does look 3D. The cars are some way in front of the wall, the lamppost, the ticket machine, everything, all stand out forward. And you sort of get the illusion of perspective as you move in front of the screen. Although things have to be quite a long way away from the camera for it to work on this close car, for example, to get this sort of jaggedy effect, as though the camera hasn't been able to meld all the images together properly. You can also press a button and get a scrolling image where it fills the frame vertically, which is a good way to view the pictures. The multi-angle 3D mode is a bit more hit and miss. It can be quite difficult to frame your subject properly. And also you get quite a lot of double imaging and ghosting with different parts of the picture. Uh, that one's rather better, I think. You get uh, less ghosting. On the multi-angle pictures, you do get more 3D effect. It's definitely more exaggerated. If you haven't got a 3D TV, you can use the screen on the back of the camera to simulate the effect. There's an accelerometer in the camera which, as you tilt it, plays back the left and right images in a sequence, which sort of fools your eye into making the picture look 3D. It's a very different system to that favoured by Fuji with its lenticular screens. You can also use the tilting playback to play through your burst mode shots to uh, sort of play through the sequence. Overall, I think the 3D aspects of the camera are still a bit of a gimmick. I don't think I want to use them that much. And they're also rather a work in progress. There's still a lot of room for improvement. However, it's great to see Sony pushing forward the boundaries of digital camera technology. Right, 
time for the news. And with the Galaxy Tab still fresh in people's minds from IFA, it now looks like Motorola wants to join in the tablet party, as it has its own Android device showing up on US mobile network Verizon's inventory list. Verizon has the device listed under the title of Motorola MZ600 Tablet, and given the timing of this announcement, it will probably hit the shelves later this year. Google has already announced that it wants to optimize the experience of larger devices on the Android platform, making this device perfect competition for both the iPad and Samsung's Galaxy Tab. Next up, after all the talk of the falling out between Adobe and Apple, it seems Adobe are going to restart their development work on the packager for the iPhone, after Apple announced it was going to relax their App Store rules. The Adobe packager for the iPhone was made available via the Flash Professional CS5 package, which allowed developers to easily make applications for iOS devices. But it's not all good news, as Apple has decided it doesn't want Flash to be used in the creation of any app, and has rejected all of those created using this tool. But this hasn't affected Adobe's business prospects at all, as their share price jumped 12% after the Apple announcement, showing just how important the iPhone platform is for any company hoping to make applications. Now, I don't mind getting the train, but the one thing I do hate is their lack of entertainment. And with the shocking battery life on my iPhone 3GS, I can really struggle to keep myself fully occupied during those long train journeys. But thankfully, your entertainment woes look set to change with the launch of Volo TV on First Great Western's train services. Paddington train station in London, about to head on this train to Bristol to experience what is set to finally bring train entertainment into the 21st century. Volo TV is the world's first fully integrated on-demand individual entertainment system designed for train travel, bringing it into the modern age and offering similar in-journey entertainment that has been offered by major airlines for years. It basically uses this personal touch screen on the back of the chair, allowing you to watch a selection of drama, comedy and sport. You can even keep up to date with the latest news via live RSS feeds, and it even has a full interactive journey guide, so you can see exactly where you are on your route and how much time is left of your journey. Currently, you can find Volo TV on first Great Western trains from London to Wales and the southwest of England. It costs just £3.50 per journey or £1.50 for an hour, and you can pay via text, phone call, or by card. You will then be given a code which you input via the touchscreen and you're granted access to all the entertainment. So let's see what our options are. The entertainment category offers comedy, factual drama, shows for kids, and sports and you're giving a selection of different videos to choose from. And if you're into fishing, you can even settle down and watch an episode of Extreme Fishing with Robson Green. All of the screens are controlled by a central hub right here on the train, and it stores all of the media on solid state hard drives. Now the best thing is playback is instant, so you can pause, scroll through the show, press play again, and your viewing pleasure isn't disrupted by any frustrating buffering. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a show to watch. All of the screens are LED backlit, so it provides a really crisp and clear picture. And unlike traditional airline screens, Follow TV has about a 180 degree viewing angle. Navigation is really simple. It uses touch screen methods like smartphones, so anyone should be able to use them. Currently, Follow TV is set to cover all of First Great Western trains by December, and will be fitted into Coach D across all of the trains. This includes all First Great Western's high speed routes to Bristol, the South West and South Wales. Well, that journey was made so much better by some simple entertainment and time flew by. I think it's great to see Volo TV doing something positive for rail travel, so here's hoping other rail networks will invest in installing on-demand services on their trains, making train journeys the high-tech way to travel. The only bad news is my next journey isn't on a first Great Western train. Well, that's all for today, but I'll be back next week with more news and reviews. And if you haven't already seen it, make sure you catch Jason's coverage from last week's Halo Reach launch. And of course, the main show is on your screens Monday nights at 8 on Channel 5. And for this week's challenge, Otis and Jason's mission is to come up with a gadget that will make an office more productive, more fun, or both. John and Polly head to Euro Disney for the day to see who can take the best picture using a new type of camera with interchangeable lenses. It's definitely one not to miss, but from me here at Web TV, it's bye for now.